Hogwarts Legacy features a nice range of potions which can provide some extraordinary benefits when used in combat. And whilst it's easy to overlook the awesome tools hidden away on this combat wheel, if you do, you are missing out. So let's objectively dive into each of the game's six potions as well as the three combat plants since they pretty much fall into the same category. We'll explore how to make them, tips on ingredient gathering, as well as the insane potion upgrades you can unlock in the talent tree before weighing up their pros and cons in order to decide which are best. Down at the bottom, we have the Invisibility Potion. Now, it kind of confused me at first why this potion was in the game when we already had the Disillusionment spell. The spell turns us invisible indefinitely and does a pretty good job of hiding us so long as we don't walk right up to people. This, on the other hand, lasts a grand total of five seconds before wearing off, and we're just as detectable walking up to enemies as we are with Disillusionment. Essentially though, what this one really is, is the wizard equivalent of a smoke bomb grenade, which can be consumed in combat to vanish from sight and get away unfollowed. Upgrading through talent points will buff your duration from 5 seconds to 10, which is a useful upgrade but definitely the least creative of the potion upgrades as we'll soon find out. Funny thing about this one is they already have a popular established smoke bomb for the wizarding world, in the form of Peruvian Instant Darkness Powder which Harry uses in Half-Blood Prince. Since it would fulfil the same function here, I kinda wish that they'd gone with that, rather than, you know, doubling up with an inferior invisibility effect to the spell version. What's more, brewing this one requires one of the most annoying to get ingredients in the form of troll bogeys. Trolls are, rightfully, one of the least numerous enemies in the game, and although each one drops multiple bogeys, they're still somewhat hard to come by, especially in early game, which is probably the time you'll need to flee combat the most, ironically. You can instead buy troll bogeys from J. Pippin's potions, but they'll cost you 100 galleons each. Again, a lot of money in early game. And if you straight up want to buy the potions themselves, they are an overpriced 500 each. That's 100 galleons per second of invisibility before upgrading where remember disillusionment is free and does a better job in all but one situation. At least the leaping toadstool caps are all over the forbidden forest and the knotgrass is easily growable because those are the three ingredients you'll need to combine for this gimmick of a potion. Invisibility was easy to place last, but from here on out, everything becomes a lot more useful. Chomping cabbages are not a potion, but rather one of the three plants which occupy the same tool wheel. As such, an entire step is eliminated in acquiring them, as they simply need to be grown. Tip for growing them then, adding fertilizer to your pots will efficiently double the yield from one to two, and is well worth doing. The seeds for all three plants can be bought from Dogweed and Deathcap in Hogsmeade. The chomping cabbages then are essentially little support minions who harass enemies and do a decent amount of level damage to them. About as much for me as the basic cast will do on its more powerful fourth hit. They're definitely a useful distraction in combat, but unfortunately they're not capable of breaking shields and you can't really control which foe they go for, so that can be a pain. But with the talent point upgrade, you can at least unlock the ability to throw two for the price of one. That's double distractions and double damage, which is quite worth it and can make those outnumbered combat scenarios run smoother and quicker. There's also a huge way to boost the damage of all plants, but first let's look at the other two. The Venomous Tentacula acts as a wizard's sentry turret, shooting globs of poison at enemies and making your life easier. They must be grown in large pots, and deploying one, we can see why. It's not the fastest shooter in the world, but deploying several at the start of a fight, we can easily make short work of an enemy camp. I'd highly recommend buying the talent for them though, as it allows their venom to shoot across a greater range, and most importantly, break shields. Yes, this is what makes them better than the chomping cabbages in my opinion. Despite doing more or less the same damage, upgrading Upgraded tentaculars won't be wasting their shots on shielded enemies, though in fairness if you're fighting something like trolls or in fairy who don't have shields, upgraded cabbages may be the better option. The best plant in my opinion. Mandrakes essentially act as a stun device for combat, stunning enemies in the immediate radius for about 4 seconds whilst dishing out a small amount of damage. This is definitely a useful thing to have, especially in hairy situations where you just need everything to calm down for a second. It's a great opportunity to pop a heal or two or dish out a flurry of uncontested follow up attacks. Another very powerful effect of the mandrake is that it's literally the only thing seemingly capable of straight up stopping a grab horn. Going 
going so far as to even make them roll over. So when fighting the Lord of the Shore or otherwise just capturing Grap Horns, this is indeed the best thing to have on your toolbar. Acquiring the Mandrake talent in the Room of Requirement tree also yields the nice benefit of double damage and an 8 second duration as opposed to 4. However, as far as talent points go, I wouldn't say this one is a top priority in the way you'll soon see that others are. But as I said before, there is a way to make all these plants way more powerful, and that is with the Hubbology Clothing Traits. By applying this to all 6 pieces of our gear, we can improve the damage output of these plants insanely. By applying just the tier 1 trait, my Venomous Tentacular damage shot from 243 to 609 per hit. That is 2.5 times more powerful on tier 1 alone. If I could find tiers 2 and 3, well, let's just say that might ruin the purpose of spells, as according to online research and my maths, we'd be dishing out 7.5 times more damage, so 1800 as opposed to 250 per hit in the case of my tentacular. On the whole, combat plants belong way higher up this list if you have this trait, but as it stands for the most part, potions are still the way to go and in my opinion are more interesting and fun. Let's get back to them. Now concentrate, focus clear your mind, because in doing so the cooldown of your spells is apparently going to be increased. The focus potion lasts for 15 seconds and as far as I can tell reduces the cooldown of our spells by a scale factor of 4. So if Avada Kedavra took 80 seconds to recharge before, which I think it does, it will now take a measly 20 seconds. Not quite spammable still, but certainly more readily available. Focus is brewed with a combination of lacewing flies which are very common around Hogwarts, fluxweed stems which are grown in large pots, and of course dogbog tongues, which believe it or not are a little bit harder to come by. Dogbogs are one of the more mid to high level enemies in this game and as such a steady supply of their tongues earlier on can be a bit of a faff to get. They're not that cheap from J Pippin either, coming in at a hundred galleons each. Again, this is kind of annoying as by the time we're later into the game we can just cycle continuously through our vast assortment of spells and cooldowns aren't such an issue. That said, the best way I've found this one to be beneficial is in assisting players who frequently use set powerful spell combos. If you like to spam Levioso then Descendo, or indeed Accio then Incendio, then you can do so a lot more frequently under the effect of a focus potion. Though obviously the objectively best thing about this is of course the more frequent use of Avada Kedavra. That said, it has a pretty powerful talent upgrade which more benefits the frequent user of slottable spells. For every spell cast from the slot list, i.e. all the combat spells displayed in this menu here, the duration of the focus effect will be increased. We can see it here look, by using my spells I'm causing the timer to go back up a bit, not quite enough to make the effect last indefinitely, but enough to squeeze a few more seconds at least. Hell, it's a self-perpetuating cycle, the more spells we cast in the time, the more time we have to cast more spells, which by extension extends the spell casting time and, well, you get the idea. But what's better than allowing us to cast more spells? Well, just making the spells themselves more powerful to begin with. The Maxima Potion is a quick 30 second brewer, which appears to double our damage for 20 seconds. It also gives certain spells a boost in order to work on higher level enemies. For example, my level 34 Gryffindor normally can't cast Transfiguration on level 34 Poachers, but with a Maxima Potion they now seemingly can. This one's also exceptionally easy to brew, with the pure combination of Spider Fangs, which if you've played this game you know there's a lot of spiders, as well as leech juice, which is pretty common along shores and can be found most early on by the Black Lake in Lower Hogsfield. Upgrading Maxima yields a great benefit too, as we now deal 3 times our base damage instead of 2 and can use any spell on any coloured shield. We can use a red on a yellow, a yellow on a purple, or just straight up fire through with a basic cast. It's such an overpowered potion and hell, pairing it with focus at the same time allows for a non-stop flurry of your most powerful spells and absolutely nothing can be done to block them. But now we come to a potion that can essentially do all your work for you. Thunderbrew creates a storm cloud above your head which fires powerful damaging lightning bolts down on foes around you. This can thin out surrounding opponents, interrupt their spell casts, or in certain scenarios like battle arenas, clear entire waves in seconds, like this pack of wolves. The effect lasts for what I think is a very generous 30 seconds as well, and believe me that's more than enough time to clear a small or maybe even medium camp. Better still, once you're a little bit into the game, 
game, you'll most likely never run out of ingredients for this one. Leech juice, same as with Maxima, is all over shores, shrivel figs can be grown, and stench of the dead is dropped by Inferi, which do become pretty common as time goes on. The talent upgrade doesn't exactly do anything new per se, but in my opinion is absolutely worth having. The increased damage, and especially range, are what takes this from a nice close quarters support buff to a literal god of thunder. Oh, and did I mention there's no limit to how many lightning bolts can fire at once, so the more enemies in the storm clouds radius, the higher the DPS of this effect will be. So what are you waiting for? Smash down into the middle of a battle surrounded by sparking blue, and demand that they bring you Thanos. Uh, Voldemort. Uh, Rookwood. Ranrock? Something beginning with R. Now we come to a potion with a seriously unfair advantage over the others, and honestly I debated exactly how to include this one. Alas, Wigan World, which we all know and love, is just our healing potion, plain and simple. It occupies its own inventory slot and can be improved by two core talents. Of course, acquiring the talents, you'll set a lot more health to be restored per each Wigan World, but honestly they're easy enough to brew en masse that you could save your talent points and just spam a lot more potions. They require Hawklump Juice, which you'll be finding in its droves, during every single cave expedition, and Dittany leaves which can be grown in the Room of Requirement. It's also a 15 second brew, so you could probably just go round in a circle of potion stands and never have to wait. Now it goes without saying that this is an essential part of the game, and its value increases with whatever difficulty mode you're on. Sure, I bet there's some very skilled people out there who don't ever need to take this because they simply don't get hit, but to most of us mere muggles, this is literally our lifesaver. It's a second chance, and an insurance policy for long fights. In fact, a good way to tell when there's a boss battle coming up is when there's a very obviously placed stash of Wigan World nearby. Honestly, it's probably not really fair to place this one so high up, and if you want to discount it from the ranking for being too different, I don't blame you. But it is still a very effective potion, so you know. But do you know what's more effective than healing after taking damage? Well, how about just not taking damage in the first place? Adirus gives you a temporary rocky skin, which can negate damage for 20 seconds. How much damage? Well, that depends on if you've upgraded it or not. Let's start with the base version. From measuring the declining health bar on my screen after this Inferius hits me, it seems to me like Adirus blocks half the incoming damage, meaning we only lose half as much health. That's useful, sure, but were it this alone, it would be way further down the list. Now let's Let's upgrade it with the talent. Not only is this the first talent in the Room of Requirement tree, but it's without a doubt one of the best in the game. Adurus now makes us 100% invulnerable to damage. Seriously, even this troll can't hurt me like this, whilst we can still inflict as much damage as we want. Spamming these in any tricky situation is one of the best things you could possibly do. But not only do you block spells, you deflect them as well. Yes, by literally just standing there, you can pretty much serve as a reflector tool with which your enemies can destroy themselves by rebounding spells. Everyone is attacking everyone, but nobody can attack you. It's pretty freaking cool. But in order to keep a steady supply, you will need two things. Mongrel fur, which isn't too hard to come by, just take out every wolf pack you see or fight them when you fight hunters. And then there's Ashwinder X, which are most commonly found up on rocky hillsides in my experience or near to abandoned campfires. Certainly an easier one to acquire once you have a broom. And trust me, you'll be wanting a lot of these, because like I said, drinking an upgraded Adurus during a sticky situation is the best thing you can do. It beats invisibility and even makes Wigan World a bit pointless. And it is for having such an overpowered ability that Adurus absolutely belongs at the top of my list. And a final brewing tip for everybody, do bear in mind as well that chopping stations are something you can place in the room of requirements and will periodically yield you a random ingredient. This could be especially nice for the rarer ones like troll bogies and dug bog tongues, but can't exactly be relied upon for a steady supply. The same can be said for hopping pots, same concept but yielding you random potions. Absolutely worth doing for bonus stock, but if you want to rack up lots of a particular potion type, you'll still want to make them, since we can only have three hopping pots, which take 12 minutes each to make a potion. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below on Hogwarts Legacy's potions. Maybe spell cooldowns are all that matters to you, or perhaps your ultimate goal is just to become a storm wizard. Either way, I'd love to hear your favourite potion or plant in Hogwarts Legacy and why. Thanks so much for watching, I'm Sam Bram, and I'll see you very soon in another video.